Hello, welcome to Williams and Bloom on your, what day is today? It's Wednesday. Wednesday. Nobody knows what day it is nope. this time of year. Unbelievable. Uh, we are here on uh, Wednesday, the 3rd of January. This is going to be a heavy basketball episode of Williams and Bloom. We welcome those who are watching live on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. We will be starting to go live on Instagram as well. So we have well over 10,000 followers on Instagram, and we'll we'll start doing that here. We need to get that set up. We are presented, as always, by our friends at Mechdyne, the Mechdyne Corporation. That is spelled M-E-C-H-D-Y-N-E, Mechdyne.com, M-E-C-H-D-Y-N-E. If you are miserable in your job, we recommend you go and check out their job board. It's a phenomenal place to work. I always tell you guys, when you guys run me out of this business, which could be any minute, let's be honest, that's where I'm going to work is is Mechdyne. Uh, we are always in the Wild Rose Casino Studios and fueled by our friends at Cody Road. You see the bottle. Simon is watching on YouTube right now. No, there is no Cody Road in the mug. Sure. <laughs> I have my beautiful Cyclones versus the World uh, mug that we got at the Cyclone Fanatic store. How are you, Bloom? Uh, I'm good. Good. It's hard to believe. It's 2024, right? <sighs> when yeah. did we have a pod? Do we do one? We on did one on uh, New Sunday. Year's, I don't know. New Year's but, Day. Was that New Year's Day? New Year's Eve. Anyway, I'm ready. I'm in basketball. New Year's mode. Eve. We did it on New Year's Last Eve. Last night, I watched conference college basketball. Felt like a basketball like, season, right? Finally. But real quick. Because we're in we're in heavy Big Twelve basketball today. This is if if the Baylor athletic department is listening. Yeah, Cyclone Larry and I are on the same wavelength, which mean which means it's the right it's, wavelength. It's utter brilliance. Yes, the camera angle. They so their new arena opened yesterday. Okay, against Cornell, their camera angle at their new arena is horrendous. Like again, you have one job anymore with a new arena. It's make your product watchable on TV. Yeah. Like literally on behalf of the Big 12, your mark needs to say, guys, fix your camera situation. It's way up high. Real, like I didn't the, see it. It's like the old Gallagher Ibo, though it's gotten a little better Gallagher Ibo maybe, but you are you feel like you're going to fall over when you're watching this thing on camera. It was bad. Hmm. Like made me uncomfortable watching. And again, it's all about TV ratings, Baylor. Should be a priority. How do you mess that up? The arena was $220 million. And they didn't even think about the TV camera angle? It, did they actually screw it up, or is it a deal where it's like, hey, it's just not quite ready? I hope that's it. Which is still staggering, if that's the case. I mean, we're, the Big 12 it's, season starts in a few uh, days. College Athletics is a TV product now. Yes. Yeah, Again, if you're gonna, you can't screw that. I, I don't know how you... It was uncomfortable watching. Maybe I'm getting old and dizzy, but... Yeah, there, like, here we go. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. Check call me one, two, one, three. We're... On YouTube. You know what it reminds me of? Um, the old games for the... Look at that. Remember the Horrible. old NBA Live games? Yeah, when you do the zoom out angle. Yeah. yeah. That's what that reminds me of. And it's one thing if it's the all 22 for football and you can see everything develop, but I'm not watching yeah, no, that different for day. that reason anyway. Good good rant. Thank That's you. good uh, well, quality I'm, Big 12 basketball rant. Larry, I appreciate when that. Larry and I agree... It, it's, it needs to be said public because I'm hopeful your Mark is listening because he's a friend of the podcast. He's a giant friend of the program, yeah. And they let the Baylor like carve out and maybe a, a platform for an, a TV or a camera below the top of the ceiling. Aiden Wyatt is our uh, now full time producer. Uh, he is here uh, his first full time week on the job. Hi, Aiden. Hey, I got a camera now. Look nice. At Look at that. He's got his camera on him, this cute little camera over there in the corner with his little uh, Stanley thermos. Thanks. He, you know, I, was, I was reading a piece on Stanley about how, like, the tools, it, it was a, like, okay, we're on camera right now. Like, they had always made this much revenue. Stanley? Yeah. Is that who makes the? Th yeah, the same company, the tool company. They make a thermos? Yes. It, That's kind of random, isn't they've it? They've become, like, it's... Very trendy. And anyways, yeah. they're making this much revenue, and then they come out with these damn thermoses. And, and it's, it's just yeah, like I, that. I think I read the same thing. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. I, it Doesn't it seem like every college student, specifically the female demographic, walks around with one of those? Now? Yes. Is that is that the case, Aiden? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. I'm actually a, I'm a Yeti guy myself, but 
What? So what is what, the, what, yeah, what's forty five dollars? What's better than about that than the Do Yeti? They keep it extra cold. I mean, what's I mean, honestly, it, what's it, a mug? It's the same thing as a Yeti in terms of like the quality is about similar, right? Yeah. I mean, I would I, I mean, would venture to guess a Yeti. It, it's better. got the same promises, you know. It keeps your drinks cold or warm <laughs> or whatever, you know. I just like it because I had one of the giant hydro flasks. Like, oh, you just stick. Yeah. But it didn't fit in my cup holder, so ah, that's why I like this a lot more. Understood. Always like those people who, you know, it's like they had the big gallons just to show, hey, I was just at the yeah. gym. Yeah, just Look at me. carrying the milk jug. Yeah. <laughs> Douchebags. <laughs> all right. Um, we are, again, as promised, we'll get into all things Big 12 basketball today to kind of set the tone for the upcoming season. The women do play tonight. I wanted to touch on this first. Yeah. If if you're listening to this on Wednesday night or Thursday, you could probably skip forward about five, ten minutes here because this is a timely conversation. Seven o'clock tip, I believe, tonight. Uh it is a six thirty. Six thirty tip tonight for the Iowa State women. In Hilton. Home opener against a good Kansas team, probably an NCAA tournament team. Fringy. Fringy. Yeah, they're they're there. So you basically have a couple of teams that we think will be bubble ish type teams playing in Hilton Coliseum tonight. I think it's a good test. Finley's group, this young group we've talked a lot about, played awesome on Saturday. A- amazing they game. Yes. Played great. The hard thing with a young team is to keep them up all the time. And th- that's where, t- to me, tonight's challenge comes in because you're coming off of this huge win, this high, and now you come back to Hilton where all of a sudden it's like you have real expectations. Like there's real... You got your crowd. Like I, I think it'll be a really interesting game tonight. For some reason, there's a psychological thing that two and zero is so much better than one and one, and you got the hard one out of the way supposedly before the year, and that was winning at Oklahoma State. I would put you weren't talking about this on the men's side. The tears. Yes. Iowa State, Kansas, and Oklahoma State are all in that. I'm not quite sure tier. Yeah. So you beat one of them already on the road, which is great. You've beaten Kansas at home a bunch. Or I, I mean, I look at the number. It's been like. 15 years in a row and starting two and zero with a young team. It's one of those confidence things. Like I think that proves to this group. All right, we're pretty good. I, I just, I like the position of this Iowa state women's team. Since Emily came back, it's like they almost the perfect trade level acquisition or, or trade deadline acquisition, even though that wasn't the case because you got to develop all this camaraderie and uh, a skill level by her not being there. Yeah. So your Jacksons of the world had to handle the ball, mm-hmm. your Bellingers, and now she's back. She takes off some of that, uh, those ball handling. But Addie Brown and Audie Crooks have become such a focal point. And I do didn't even have a great game at all down no. in Stillwater, and, you, and you, you put up 80 on them. What's wild is prior to the Emily Ryan health story, if I would have said, like, you know, how this team is doing it. It, it. it would have been shocking to know that Emily Ryan is there playing. Now, she's not full strength. She's not full strength, yeah. nope. But that they were able to do a game like they did on Saturday with Emily just basically playing 20 spot minutes. Yeah, and she was she was good. Yeah, but she wasn't. Good. And she it's was, a hell of a hell of a sixth man. Yeah, 100%. You know? Like, I, we'll take it. But it, it is it's just wild to see how this thing is developed yep. because I think after all the women transfer out last year, yep, and then the Emily health thing, you kind of just at that point, I think everybody goes, it's going to be a long going, year. Yeah, but, I, but you're right in the middle of it, and then you know, the the interesting thing on the women's side is those new schools, the the new Big Twelve schools are 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 not great, they're not really good either, so I think the opportunity seat up to really clean up on those bottom four, uh, you, you know, unlike last year where there wasn't really even, even the techs could jump up and get you. Yeah. UCF, BY, I mean, some of these, they're not very good. And so the, the hope is you clean up on that bottom end, you fight out with the, the again, that middle tier, and it's going to be hard to beat Baylor in Texas, but it's always hard to beat Baylor in Texas. If this Iowa State women's team can get to 11 and 7-ish, mm-hmm. probably was going to take, you're going to be in the tournament. I think this group can't. So, from where they were, you're right, six weeks ago to now, I think that Iowa game, in a weird way, and it was a loss, gave them a lot of confidence that, hey, we were leading a top-five team uh, without Emily Ryan with four minutes left. So, And I'm telling you guys, Addie Brown, Audie Crooks, Legit. 
they're worth the price of admission. So go support them. They're gonna be fun. I think I think they get it done today, and I'm excited for them because then they go to uh, they get TCU next. So that's Eddie, another one of those games. Like God, you could start three zero. Eddie Brown to me feels like the next Bridget Carlton slash Ashley Jones. It's like a yeah, she's it's like a Carlton Jones yeah. uh, Chelsea Poppins combo. That's good. The Poppins. And she, she that's just really play, good. And she's a just she's, a leader she's by nasty. example. She's yeah, throwing right, an elbow right. at you. Like yeah. I think it's Bridget. Bridget was tough. No, but she, she was wasn't more of a finesse type player. Right. Crooks to me feels something totally different, and I I don't know exactly what that is, but I I just we you've been around longer than me in the Finley era, you know Pop was probably the best big, but she was kind of like a big hybrid. Yeah, was, the, you know, in the last fifteen years, I mean you go Anna you know, Prince well, is probably the best I can. Angie Welly, correct, and that's yeah. what I'm saying. You're going back to an era even yeah. before me. But what I would argue with that is the game has changed so much as far as just how it's played. Looking at Audie Crooks in more of a, you know, positionless basketball type of game where I think she has an opportunity to be even more dominant because she's going up against fewer bigs. For and, sure. And if she can pop out and shoot the three the way and that... Be, and be nimble enough to yeah. stay in front of people. Somebody sent me, uh, my guy Tom sent me a DM after our show on Sunday, we were talking about Audie. He's like, she's actually reminds me a lot of Victor Alexander. Oh, that's good. Early nineties at Iowa state, big guy, very nimble, great hands. I think it's a great comparison. Uh, big Vic could shoot the three as well. I misspoke. It's BYU on Saturday, not TCU. Oh, okay. BYU is also. And that's a great. hard road trip. It is no matter where you go, but then you get West Virginia at home. I'm telling you, if Iowa state, they can start four. They can start four and zero, oh, and then they get Baylor at home on uh, the thirteenth next would, Saturday. Maybe oh you could goodness. sell that one out. All right, let's let's go. Honestly, yeah. So I'm I'm excited for them, but this is a big game just to to keep keep on plugging away. But this Kansas team has come a long ways the last couple of years under Schneider. I think uh, it'll be a heck of a game tonight. Good stuff. We appreciate it. Uh, we are presented as always by our friends at Back Time. We want to thank our friends at Gravitate Coworking. Check them out at gravitatecoworking.com. Uh, they are uh, really, really simple, remote. These these offices where you can pop in and out, uh, you just pay a monthly rate depending on what you want. They have floating desks. They have full offices. Go to gravitatecoworking.com. They and are, coffee. Yeah, they have coffee, and I, I reckon they also have some beer, a couple of the places. Uh, they are owned and operated by great Cyclones. Also, my buddy Jeff Kelderman down at Kelderman Manufacturing. Really appreciate them. They, they've stepped up and sponsored the Woody and Mahoney show, which is awesome. If you guys haven't listened to that yet, you absolutely should. Grant Mahoney is a budding star here at Cyclone Fanatic. He's he's hilarious. I Those guys constantly cracking me up. Um, th- so anyways, Kellerman's been sponsoring them, and, man, we appreciate it if you need. So what they're really pu- pushing right now, we have a ton of engineers that listen. Uh, obviously, Iowa State, a great engineering school. Uh, Kelderman does laser cutting, and I know you engineers are always looking for that. Uh, check them out at kelderman.com for more. Also, last but certainly not least, our friend Hope Wood. Here's what she does. She makes you a will in a day. That's right. I'm one day. One. You know that? No. Get you. Nope. I still got to get it. Sending one, uh, getting it figured out this week. Hope, look for an email. Hopewoodjd.com. You can use the promo code FANATIC, get you $50 off. I realized after our week in Memphis that I'm a lot older (sighs) than I thought I was. A little older than the last time. (laughs) Yeah. Don, hey, there's, don't know if I'm going to make it. Hey, just so you know, speaking of Memphis, before we get into our Big 12 basketball uh, breakdown where we are going to list the Big 12 teams, we're going to build out tiers. Tiers. We're tiering them. Yep. Um, We did our Jerry the King Waller party which you were a part of, um, we had, so it was actually the craziest damn deal ever. Jerry the King fell and broke his hip the night before. Yeah, that was a bummer. Damnedest deal. So the King couldn't make it because he had surgery at like 3 o'clock in the morning the night before. What are the chances, right? Point is, we still had our party, and it was amazing. Like, I almost cried, like, three times because I just had so much pride for... It was all of our... It was subscribers only. We didn't open it up to anybody in the public because our subscribers bought the tickets up and, like, 
a matter of hours. Yep. But we we priced it very. Um, it was more of a thank you. So we we charged ten dollars, but everybody got a free beer or a drink. Yep. So really, I mean, it was like a five dollar ante. Yep. Just to get people to we we could have sold t- a thousand of these tickets. It was such a hot commodity, but we're having a nice little check for we will that we we raise some money there and then my my friends over at living ava's way so we're going to give about i think about fifteen hundred dollars to each year. i know awesome. it's not a lot no, in your it, world it, but it, it, hey everybody everything helps. everything counts we again we could have priced it more aggressively but this was more of a thank you to our subscribers while we could do some good and um i know that over at the hutchinson's are gonna they have big plans for that That's they're so cool. trying to do some stuff over at the park Yep. Right across from our house, which there's Ava's butterfly garden and all that stuff. So we're going to be a part of some construction efforts. Yeah, over and there. I mean the, the the game result was a bummer, but there was so many other fun positive things that happened with the trip, just with the fan base and obviously the practices and everything else. But yes, uh, thank you, thank you. And, no, and see, like I was talking, love you, to do it. This is if I don't have these like side things to be doing good with this, like it would hard, it would be hard for me to keep doing it. So, like, to me, it's really important that our community's out there making a difference. And I, I said this on the stage, too. Like, there's few people more critical about the status of college athletics than me. But, like, what Bloom and these guys are doing actually matters. Like, I've seen it firsthand with my daughter. Like, they're actually doing good things in the community. So, like, I'm 100% yeah. you know, conscious. Well, or, like, you know, it, it feels good to give back to We Will because I know you guys are doing well, good well, stuff. Well, so we're going to announce this here in... in right next couple of weeks but we're doing this what's called a lead to read program with at-risk kids and mainly in Des Moines public and aimed school districts where we're going to get the Iowa State football players basketball awesome. players women's basketball players to go down there to learn about the value of reading so it's going to start with and a lot of people don't even know this and I didn't until I got involved with this Iowa State sponsors two schools in the Des Moines public schools area it's um King Elementary and I think Moulton, I might, I might be having that get that wrong, but if you go through K to six through those schools and you stay in your college and then you, you go through the Des Moines public school system and you're eligible to get into an in-state college, Iowa State through this program has raised enough money that they will pay for those kids to go to Iowa State. That's awesome. Yeah, I don't think anybody I didn't, know, I didn't know that. So we tagged up with them. If it's called, I think it's ISU for You program. Uh, I, again, it's I'll, I'll tweet it out. But we're coordinating with that group that's already doing that with those kids that are in second and third grade to say, hey, these are the Iowa State student athletes that that could be you someday if you choose to go to Iowa State. So it's a really nice way to cross promote what is already happening in a great thing, get some extra visibility for that program, which they are raising money. That's for, cool. I didn't know that. Along with um, getting the guys out in the community. And uh, it's it's yeah, but there's so many great things. And again, I can I can say, man, this has been a stressful week because now you know, we got through that portal season for now now i'm worried about the basketball portal season and everything else it's like there's never a but yeah. it's fun to see those reminders of those people that come up to us in memphis and say hey appreciate what you're doing with with all these things and having people like steve kemp oh, and man. cite my friends at fanatic with you guys to, to help us out along because it's hard I, I man like there are there's so many other great charities that if we can help elevate those charities as well it's a win-win well <laughs> i'm i'm i got plans <laughs> trouble i'm we're working to get a professional wrestling event we're gonna shut down You're the street about in front this. of my house i was talking to hutch about it this week and i want to get a local professional wrestling organization to build a ring i'll shut i'll get the street shut down and i need the ceo conrad holly to interrupt a match and like body slam somebody Can we sell tickets for this thing oh yeah Leave it to uh, I'm leave, gonna leave it to Iowa State's NIL. I'll be mean, Gene Okerlund for the make, night. Make a living off of alcohol, pizza, and wrestling. And pro this wrestling. is us. Let's. I go. mean, think about the pub you would get if. By God, that's Jared Hufford's music, and Who he comes in and body slams somebody. Son of a bitch! <laughs> <laughs> Who's the football? Damn it! Who's the football player you think would be the most electric in the ring? Who looks the best with his shirt off? Honestly, like, there's always that that's guy. Fair. That's fair. There's got to be one. Not of them. always the best player on the team, but there's somebody who looks the best with his shirt off. Hmm. Hmm. Colin Newell. Colin. We got to get Colin Newell involved. 
Woody, I mean, Woody I does mean, owns a CrossFit Con- gym, for God's sake. Conrad and Rob Jones would be electric. There's no oh, question. Man, you get big Rob energy. Get Bob, yeah, he, he looks, looks he like look, he could he be does, a pro wrestler. Like right now. And he's physical enough that he could make it happen. Rob, if the whole pro <laughs> thing doesn't work out. Simon says it's Otzelberger. <laughs> <laughs> we also have one request here real quick, Aiden. Uh, this will do a little production work. Earn your money today. Get ready for shots like this. Uh, Jason wants to... Can we have the Hassle Sucks video? Can you pull it up to where it just... Is it the Hassle Sucks part so we don't have to watch everything before? So here's the situation. We raised in this one, like, 10-minute period, like $350 to FaceTime Chris Hassle. We're literally walking around with a bucket. Yeah. It was Aiden. Yeah. We raised $350 in 10 minutes to FaceTime Hassel and interrupt his wife's birthday dinner. Birthday dinner so we could all chant Hassel sucks. Here, Here we go. Microphone. Everybody be quiet. What do you have to say? I told you I was celebrating my wife's 40th birthday. We're out to dinner, just the two of us. I said, don't you dare do this. And you still did it anyway. Hassle sucks. Hassle sucks. So, yes, the Memphis trip wasn't a complete loss. I mean, that's worth the price. That was a dub right there. Well done, Aiden. Nicely done. Great production there, young man. I think there were a few uh, beverages consumed that night. Oh, my gosh. What a deal. What a deal that was. That was one of the highlights of my life, getting that many people to chant hassle. I mean, honestly, if the king was there, it would have been overboard. He would have been in the background. Puppies! (laughs) And then we had a deal after it where we took over the VIP room in the basement again. Yeah. It was incredible. That's great. It was incredible. Good times. All right. Uh... Wiffles Hybrids gives us our Big 12 segment each and every week, each and every uh, Williams and Bloom episode. Uh, plant your independence, plant Wiffles. Bloom's idea here. Yes. Where we are going to go through the current Big 12 basketball teams and we're going to put them in tiers. Now, I think uh, there's a very strict full disclosure here where a lot of these teams. I don't know. Correct. Like you look up and down. Like I think, like you know, I'll, I'll give you a team right now. BYU. Where do you put? Them? They scheduled a lot like Iowa State did, but they're killing people. Correct, which is why they're so high up in the net. They have one loss. It was to their rival Utah on the road. They lost by four. Mm-hmm. But you know they're they're playing. You know, they have a better win probably than Iowa State, maybe with Arizona State on a neutral court. They beat NC State on a neutral court, so yep, they have nice better wins. better wins. They beat San Diego State early on, so that's a good win. But I also, like, I don't know if that translates what they've done. Mark Pope's a good coach. Does a nice job. They got size. I just think there's a lot of these schools where I just don't know yet. Like, Texas is a team where I look at them, and it's like they're talented, but I think their coach sucks. Like, I don't think he can hold up another year. Honestly, I think he's terrible. Like, if you watch them, yeah, like they I are have. not well coached. No, they and they're they are small. Yeah, that's like, the thing is they are small. I've, small. I just, like Baylor. Okay, they good team, really good team. Like I believe they'll be a Sweet Sixteen caliber type team in March. Agreed. I don't think they are right now. I watched them play Michigan State, and it was like, what the hell is that? Michigan yeah, State gets- sucks this year. So like this season to me. Seems very wide open I, at this point in time. Very I'm wide open. I'm with you. Here's the thing. The Big 12 is the best conference in college basketball. However, I do think it's down. I do not think this year there is the high, high end we've seen over the last three to four years in the Big 12 where some of those teams are so good. Now, caveat being Houston, Kansas, in my opinion, both sh- could and, and, and should potentially right now make the Final Four. So, yes. But, again, that's 2 of 14. 
you're you got to look at this a little bit more like this is this like spells the Big trouble Ten. for RPI. It, and it stuff could, like. but you're you're in a really good spot. Yes. heading into it, which is great because your numbers are already your analytic numbers. Ken Palm RPI net. They're already good. So the Big 12 did well in non-conference it, it, which competition. Which is great, because yes. I do not think the conference is as good top to bottom. And I don't think it's close. And so that that leads me to this. We're going to play the game, everybody. Okay. Odds to win the regular season Big 12 championship with Chris Williams. <sighs> so there, there are now one, two, three. There's 14 teams. He's like, we're gonna get used to this because when there was ten, yeah, it was it was hard because there was never a night off. Kansas is the favorite. You are wrong, and this shocked me. Houston is Houston's the favorite at plus one ninety right now to win the Big Twelve. I think that is completely wrong. Are you serious? If I, in fact, if there was a if there was a no bet on Houston to win the Big Twelve, I would do it today. Is that I, is shocking? They, now, the resume looks great. They're one in Ken Palm. Okay, I mean this literally Vegas is if you if you stack up. And this will don't so don't don't read in this entirely. But if you stack up Ken Palm and the odds to win the Big Twelve, it's one to one, like they're the same. So that because they're number one, their numbers are great. They have one really good win. Yeah, they have good wins, not great. Yeah, I, I and, and they're they're are athletic. I like their guards a lot. I think Jamal Shedd is awesome. I'm a big LJ Cryer fan. Their big guys are super unknowns right now. I think once they get in the Big Twelve, it is going to be a a little bit of a wake-up call when they're in Hilton Coliseum on a Tuesday night. For what it's worth, Ken Palm has Houston a four-point favorite over Iowa State in that game. Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, that, that game is, man. Take the points, buckle up. Saying. Buckle up on that one. I, I can't wait to be in Hilton for that game. So Houston's won. Uh, Fran Fraschella will be on the call for that game. Though. There you go. We have some inside information. We think we may have Fran coming on a Cyclone Fanatic podcast between now and then. <sighs> Stay tuned. First you stay, she now, Fran. Fran's the man. He's such a good guy. He is. He's, he he's sat really next good. to me and Darren Hanson when we were calling the Iowa State. God, which game was it? Texas A and M game. Oh yeah, in Orlando. In Orlando. And he didn't. Did he have any reason to be there? He was just. He was just. He he actually yes. He was heading from wherever holiday tournament he was at. He was heading to Miami with USA Basketball because oh, okay. he works with. The, and he stopped in Orlando on the way to watch Iowa State. I, what I like this year. Once the, the calendar turns to January, it's Fran for Shilla season. Yeah, hell yeah. Like every night, he's somewhere. So and I'll you, watch those games just over because anybody, it's yeah. Fran. Well, because I know I'll get better insight yeah, on those teams. And he know he he does his homework. Like yeah. he goes and travels. Like I say, he just he, he went gets it. he went to he made a stop in Orlando just to see Iowa State he's, play one game. He's Mr. Big Twelve. Um. So yeah. So, so Houston, Houston is favored won. over Kansas. Yep. That's so surprising. Who's two? Kansas. Yep. This they, is where so there so there's if my it's tier. 190, what is Kansas? 220? 290. Jeez. I know. Put your money there. I that's your bet. Three to one for Kansas. Are we are we doing this? I mean, it's it's Bill Self. I I I'm I'm shocked by that. I'm okay, like, so tier, very few things shock me. That is shocking. So there's tier one. It's not close, in my opinion. I don't think the rest of the crew is anywhere near those two. So they are they is are Baylor third? So Third right now is BYU at six that's, to one. Don't do that. Don't that's do a that. terrible value bet. Yep. Baylor's fourth at seven to I, one. I would put Baylor ahead of BYU I think so. for sure. I think Baylor Baylor's got now Jacoby Walters a future top. I would 10 put player. Iowa State ahead of BYU. Interesting because guess who's number five? Iowa State. Iowa State. Yeah. I my whole thing with BYU, and again, they're kind of weird. They're the same way in football. BYU's the one of the one of these new teams. That came from the you know, the American teams. Mm -hmm. BYU is not going to change what it does. It it recruits yeah, the, the, the Mormon population. Of, yeah, they get the first pick of any of those guys, and that's who they're going to have. That's mm -hmm. going to be their team. Yep. Like in football, they're going to spike up when they have a Zach Wilson coming through. Sure. Right. It's why I've I've, I've said this before. If you talk to coaches. Utah State is a great job for coaches because they get the Mormons that don't go to BYU. BYU. It's yep. a it's a recruiting base that they just have. And so like BYU's team, while it's performed well, I need to see this group in an 18 game Big 12 schedule they've never totally. experienced before. Totally. That is a terrible bet. It's six to I am one. Shot. Now it's again all Ken Palm because they are ranked. Yeah. What are they in Ken Palm? They're third. They're third in Ken Palm right now. That's crazy. 
But everything they've experienced up until now is normal to them. Well, and then they're going to have to make some monster road trips, too. Correct. I mean, that's another one. Like, what? So I would put them... They're an unknown tier to me, how, but I'm not buying it. How about this start for them? They get Cincinnati at home on Saturday. So, again, uh, it's pretty a, normal. Yeah, with, it's a win. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> then they got to go. So then they turn around. They fly to Baylor for a Tuesday game. Okay. Waco, in their new arena. Uh, they're predicted to win that game. I would put... Aiden's 401k. And I know he just started. He just started. Bro. But uh, I would put that on Baylor in that game right now. And then then they go. Aiden's 401k. Then they Have go. Have you even signed the papers for that yet? Is that even a thing? No. no. Yeah. Well, so, that, so it's not much. Uh, and then they go to Orlando to play UCF. Do you go back? Who's to better than I thought they would be? Yeah, they're okay. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're, they're, they're bubble-ish. Do you, but that do you go back to Provo and then fly to Orlando? That'd Student be a, athletes, Brent, they got to get right to class. Goodness, and then they then and then that's after that. Then they turn around on that next Tuesday and host Iowa State. So All the good right. news with Iowa State was when you go to Provo, you're getting a team that just went to Waco and and, and Orlando. Do we need to? We'll, we'll talk about it before. Mike, maybe, maybe we do like an oral history of the last time Iowa State played at BYU. Let's get a bedroom on the show. The book chapter I have on that game is going to be epic. Has that been? That was the last, yeah. Two thousand. When DeAndre got tossed. Two thousand fourteen. Yeah. Oh, we had an epic game watch at Bench Warmers for that. That, <laughs> that game watch at Bench Warmer, like, there'll never be a better game yep. watch than that. If you were there, you know what year was that? I mean, it was like ten years ago. Yeah, two thousand fourteen. The most because it was the coming out party for the Hoiberg era, really. Like, they just beat Michigan. Yeah, like, like it, I can't it was, do it again. It's like the year before was fun. You know, yeah. like th- this was like, oh my God, like what are we These stumbling upon to now? Matt Thomas. Is you got guys shots. flipping the crowd yeah. off. You got a guy gouging out the eye of another. That big fella. And we're he all just like, hammered. He looked like, like, yeah, he, rip his head off. Eva Drago. It was yeah. the best game watch of all time. So Iowa State's fifth at 13 to one. That makes me feel pretty good, doesn't it? I yeah, take, but I think you, they've severely botched. BYU, so I, I don't know how much. I, that's, they know. I know. Well, would you take Iowa State at fifth? Absolutely, yeah. I would sign up for it right yeah. now. Don't even want to play the game. So, okay, this is in my tier conversation. Who's after Iowa State? Well, this is what's super interesting to me. Texas. Texas is actually seventh. TCU. TCU. I don't buy Oklahoma. TCU is eight. Then it's got to be Oklahoma at six. So I don't buy it. There's your tier. I would put. Do you buy it? No. Now, their resume is great. Yeah. I, no, I'm not doubting that. I've watched them. They've got some really good pieces. I wouldn't call them NBA pieces. Nice te- Moser does a nice job. That's a winnable game for Iowa State, 100%. So I'm putting BYU, Baylor, Iowa State, Oklahoma, Texas, and TCU all in that, you know, second tier behind the top two. And I think it's a pretty clear cutoff between the bottom six and that middle. What six. do you think of TCU right now? It's hard to say. I've watched them a couple of times. I think their coaching is better than their I, talent. Yeah, I think Dixon's good. I just they 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 really miss Mike Miles type. I mean, that's the thing, Chris. You look at all these teams the past couple of years. They had a dude. Yeah. I, I don't I mean who are you giving the ball to if you're TCU right now. They just that's what I'm saying. You know, it's an old Bannon. I but I think Matt I trust Miller's okay. Demir Nelson's son's there now. I just. I, press, I, don't know. I trust Dixon. He's really Yeah, and good. he's and they're getting, they've done it before. I like, like Dixon more than I like Mark um, Pope. Yeah, I, I like Dixon more than I like Moser. Oklahoma. Yeah. I so but I think yeah, and then Texas, and it, you're and right. Texas, I'll put Ots right there above most I think so. I not probably not Dixon. Like Dixon's been doing it for a really long time. He he's has, a Hall of the, Famer. And I just I just I look at the roster, I'm like, they're okay. They're all right. The one thing I love about Ots, though, is there, there's he's starting to develop a little bit of a rep in this league where it's like that he has Scott Drew's number. You know, there's some of these teams that Ots can just match up pretty well with. He's, but I kind of feel like that all changes too with yeah. Iowa State style. Now. Totally. Yeah, it's I like think this maybe is that a doesn't new, really translate. I would say that's it's a completely new script. Throw that year. out. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. last year, was Baylor just like, hated those games that oh, Iowa it was, State. It was would the just, opposite of yeah. like, It was like Baylor was the hoy ball team. Yeah. Against a. Uh, Texas Tech from and years then past. our guys would just go in there oh, throwing punches and stuff and it. yeah, 
mean, they were they got so sick of Rob Jones last oh. year. Like, get this guy off the floor. That that game in the Big Twelve tournament, like they, <laughs> they, they Baylor no did not want to be at nope. that game. What's that. they? You know, when they got that draw, and it was Iowa State and Kansas City that Drew was just like, all right, uh, we're just prepping for the NCAA. That was that was actually. The back-to-back wins over Baylor oh. right after the Caleb Grill thing happened. Kind of Incre- a, a, really fun. incredible. And then Iowa State lays the egg against Pittsburgh, but that's kind of who they were last year. So yeah, so I'm I'm putting I don't know. I think that middle group is all about this very similar. I'm not buying BYU. And then on the bottom end, Tech K State, Cincinnati, that next tier three I would put them at, and then the bottom three. I think are really going to struggle to get wins. Oklahoma State, West Virginia, UCF. And, and so when I look at this league, see the Oklahoma State, I haven't seen them much. Uh, yeah. I watched a couple of their games in November, and I wasn't not impressed. Just, and, and I think he's on the hot seat a little bit. Remember, we thought he was going to be a really big deal about two years ago. Well, when he had Cade Cunningham, you, know, you look better. Interestingly, I don't think do you, do we forgot about this because – February was the blur last year. Iowa State goes down to Norman and wins early last year and got completely kind of embarrassed in Hilton by Oklahoma, by very average Oklahoma team last year. Yeah, like the Oklahoma double, and Oklahoma lost State Lost by games. double digits in Hilton. Yeah. So there's, again, not a lot to do. It's almost a completely different roster on both ends. Can we talk a little bit about Kansas State? Sure. I mean – don't take too much from it. They only beat Chicago State by seven last night. Yeah, and they got beat by Fred by 16. Yeah, Fred killed them. I don't know. I don't. They've had all that drama I, down there. Cam they, Carter's a nice player. Kaluma's okay. They had a nice win against Villanova. Yeah, that, 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 that's a nice win. Go on the win, road and win it at LSU by 15. And I start to think, like, maybe they've kind of turned the corner there. And then Fred punks them. Beat I, Wichita. Wichita's not very good anymore. They and have this Chicago State game last night was like Chicago State is one of those perennial teams that's just horrible. So like, but they, I was just talking with Aiden about this before you walked in. Chicago State beat Northwestern right after they beat Purdue. They're not as bad as they've been. Okay. But still, you they were favored by twenty and they only won by seven against Chicago State. That's I don't know. K State, every time I've and maybe I've just picked them on the wrong nights. Yeah. But it 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 feels like He's a good coach. It feels like they probably aren't reaching their talent level right now because they've had so much distraction is the vibe I get from them. Yeah, I don't know and, if it's they, real or not, and, but that's the feeling I get. And it last year, they just com- caught complete lightning in a the bottle. They were kind of like the Minnesota Vikings in football last year where they won every close game, the bounces went their way. And that who was it. Marquise Noel was just – yeah. A wizard. I don't know this year with K-State. They can't be real optimistic. How about this? So Ken Palm has them losing one, two, three, four, five, six, nine games in a row in the middle of February. I mean, some of these teams are still going to run into that. But yeah. where K-State, K-State opens up UCF at home, at West Virginia, uh, at Tech, Baylor at home. and then Oak- So they could get off to an okay start in the conference. Has anybody done the research on uneven scheduling like is that's does another anybody, good point does yeah, anybody have a more favorable schedule like the is that why potentially houston is the favorite that's a good point i don't that's know real, I, don't, I don't i don't know the answer to that i just just curious we have we haven't had to think about we this. haven't yeah because there's always been a new player but yeah I, great point c-dub uh i want to thank our friends at the iowa state university foundation move what matters.com move what matters.com they are, um, it's the best way to diversify your giving to Iowa State. I give to journalism. I give to veterinary medicine. I give to the marching band. I give to the Ivy College of Business. I think those were the four I did in 2023. But you can give to, like, a, I'm an old theater guy. Maybe I should give to the theater department this year. Switch it up. Movewhatmatters.com. I ran into a, a, a well established, uh, be a well rounded cyclone. Very nice couple from Florida at the game in Memphis. He was an architecture alum. Oh. And uh, he, he told me he supports the call to design through the Great. foundation. That's awesome. And, and my brother in law is a professor in the call to design. You know what I'm going to do this year? I'm going to give a gift to the call to design, industrial design to be specific. 
We'll give you updates on yeah. Forever True Day. That's right. It's is that, that's coming up here just around the corner. Williams and Bloom, the 3rd of January, 2024. Women's basketball tonight. The men play Oklahoma on Saturday. Right. And get, then the women play at BYU. Get you on the record for the men. Okay. 10 and 8. Here's where I'm at. We do this with bowl. We we do this with football, mm-hmm. where you kind of go like where you think they are, where you think worst case, where best case we could were be. Pretty close. We were really close in football year. this FYI. year. FYI, yeah, we both were. I'll go the men. What I want is ten and eight. Okay. I think a really high end season would be eleven and seven. I could see them at nine and nine. And nine and nine would be probably still in, but it would be. I don't know. I feel like nine and nine, you'd be in. I think so. With your net ranking the way I it know, is now, it just now. depends who you beat, though. That's like, true. If you just beat up on the bottom, and you still don't have a great win, you're going to be sweating it out a little bit. Am I wrong? Am I too low on I, this team? I I'm just trying to be realistic. No, I appreciate Brent, that. I just don't know. They haven't played anybody. True. In, like I I think that they're a lot better than the team we saw in Orlando. I really do. I, I think I across the board, they're a much better team. I, I want to see they're it. They're so much better than they were a year ago. So again, my gut tells me 10 and 8. Maybe you lean 11 and 7, but like I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, and, and last year, 13 and 5 won the conference. So yeah, if you're yeah, 11 and 7, you're good. right there. That's pretty good. I, I'll say I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just go right down the middle. I'm going to say 10 and 8. It's kind of where I have them. I think you're going to be great at home. I, I keep coming back to that. I do not see Iowa State losing more than I'll put the over under at a game and a half at home. And I just think they're going to be really good there. And so you just need to get a couple of it on the road. I just, and I think the bottom of the league is down from what I we're used to, that you're going to pick up some road wins. The key to me, you tell me if I'm wrong, because I think with the bigs, we know what they are. Yes. Right. Although think- Ward... Ward Ward gave you a little more than I thought I was going to give you, which is great. I think Ward, though, is like best case scenario. He's this really good defensive. Oh yeah, guy, you're not giving runner. you're not throwing him the ball in the post, right? Absolutely. I think Jones is take a step back from where he is right now. He's not going to do this against Big Twelve teams every night out, but he's much better. He's he a much better. better player than what you've had. That's, that's true. I think Momchilovich has absolutely benefited from the schedule. I think he's seen enough length where in in Orlando and then even the Iowa game where he's now adapted to the you know he looks like he knows the one spots will correct be. yep just going through my I think Lipsy's first team all Big Twelve yep my question is still Gilbert I think he's gonna get there can Gilbert be this guy against? Big 12 competition night in, night out. If the X answer factor. is yes, then Iowa State is a top four seed. I think it'll be a little rougher than that, and that's totally to be expected if you look at what Keyshawn has done in his career. He still hasn't played a ton of basketball. Mm-hmm. Sure. And he really hasn't played much at this level. So, like, if this is the guy that Iowa State's going to get, then I would lean more towards the 11-7 and seven deal. Yeah. We just don't know don't because know. he hasn't. And, we haven't seen him play enough. And then same with Kurt Jones. Kurt Jones. Put the, and then Jackson, and he's come on really. Jackson well. Pavletsky's really come on, but we'll see it against day in and day out in the Big Twelve. I'm with you. I th- but at least there's multiple guys though. So it's like, oh, it's not Jones's night. Well, we'll put him on the bench because well, last year's like, is Gabe gonna make a shot? Correct. No. Okay. Long day. Yeah. Is Gabe making shots? Yeah. All then right. we're probably yeah, gonna win. Pretty weird. Do you agree with me on Gilbert I, I though? I like he's totally kind of the glue here. He is. Okay. There, are, there are like Sunday's a great example. Gets a triple double, but there's a couple plays where he's out of control. You're like that's not going to do it. Yeah, I can't do that. And they just don't want because what we saw in Orlando, and he's gotten so much better since then. But he just started to over dribble. You could tell he got nervous because he he just had longer guys on. Even the VCU game, like where he had 23 or whatever it was, he's still turning it over a yeah. lot. And he's he's step by step gotten better, and it's why I like this schedule for this team because they've been working. If you're watching these games, they're practices. They're practicing. They've against had him team. on the ball a lot. They have, and you yeah. know that they're doing that for a reason. They're getting this thing set up for Big Twelve play. I I I think talent wise, I always say it is definitely top five for sure. And t- but I 
I'm excited to see this team play Saturday for sure because I don't. That's one of those games. It's like that's a that's a coin it's flip, a total tweener. It's, it is, and uh, you know, if you Oklahoma lose, will be a slight world, favorite, right? Oklahoma should be a slight favorite, one or two points. I'd say, yeah, maybe two to three, two to three points. Yeah. But it'll be fun. I think this this team's gonna be entertaining, and Hilton's gonna be rocking all winter. I want to see what Aiden thinks. Aiden, what do you give us a prediction for the Iowa State men this year? Don't be don't be shy. We're gonna start bringing you in on this stuff. See. I'm kind of in the same boat as in. I think they could finish eight and ten, and depending on who they win, have a decent chance to get. I, it, you got to, but you're if you go eight and ten, you're gonna have to beat yeah a Kansas beat, or right, exactly. somebody. The problem is, that, damn it, that if they would have won one of those I games, know. give me one of those. Give me a And M. If you're an a And M, you're. But if, hey. if you beat that a And M team, eight and ten, you're probably leaning in a good direction because mm-hmm. that's a Q one. Correct. So, but yeah, it is what, anywhere like nine and nine. Yeah, I just eight. I don't think the bottom of this league is going to be great. Well, if they clean up, I mean that that used to be the glory of this league. Correct. It's like Tech sucked, TCU sucked, and you were just going to get two against you know because you're playing around Robin. That was early on, and then all of a sudden, Chris Beard's down there cheating his balls off, <laughs> you know, and then <laughs> Jamie Dixon comes, comes up and he's K State all of a sudden has yeah now you got K State's you know like there's just no nights in it. It kind of feels like that could be it, but still, it's like, yeah. how comfortable are you going to be going into West Virginia? Well, yeah, you, well, you don't yeah. have to do that this year. Thank God, maybe that's a schedule break. You only get them at home. But you know, looking at Iowa State's schedule, you got to go to BYU. Yeah, you go, you get BYU twice, which is hard. That is a terrible draw for it's Iowa State break, to have actually. that be your rival. Yep, jeez. And then you get uh, you get K State twice. All right. You get Oklahoma twice, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, you, but those you, are quad one. You don't opportunities. Get, you, you it, it, true. You don't. You only get UCF once, and it's on the road. You know, so that's again. I, I hope. I hope we don't get to the point where it's Saturday, March second, and you're in Orlando and you need the win. I think you want to be in a good enough position where that game you can just add on to your total because the first four, honestly, see up. This it's kind of a grinder right off the bat. You know, you get Oklahoma, Houston, you get Oklahoma State at home, which should be a win. You better win that game. But then at BYU, at TCU, there there is a there is a world where Iowa State, well, and they're they're gonna be underdogs in three of those first four games. Yeah. And so if you go one and three, I'm gonna guess the fan base is not gonna be real pleased. No way. This <laughs> fan base. And then how do you keep it together? Because it you know, it, so that's because then you turn around and play K State and Kansas at home. So it's, would you uh, rather have at Oklahoma or Houston at home? We want Houston at home, right? Probably. Yeah, for sure. But both would be great. Yeah, both would be great. I think you go one on one, you'll be. Is it? This excited. is a true Tim Floyd standings year. Yeah, it is. You got to be good at home, everybody. That's the key. Aiden doesn't even know what that is. I'll, so here's the thing. I would. Well, uh, I'm trying to sh- prevent the meltdown before the meltdown happens. Do you think that works sometimes with? No. With logic. No. It's a long. It's gonna be a long conference. It season. is. You are going to go through some stuff. You're like, this team sucks. Or you're going to go through some stuff like, oh, my gosh, this team just beat. We're not losing again. I'm just warning you in advance. It's January 3rd. Yeah. If there's going to be some, I think some that, ups and downs. I think with the women, too, just that young of a team. Could be tonight. Yeah, I mean, they very well could lose this game It's tonight. And then, you know. The best. The it's best, how do you pick yourself up after it. That's the key. The best thing about following the NBA closely is you realize that you cannot live and die off of every game result until you get to the tournament and then the season's over. Yeah, but and that's just, really what it is. You're setting yourself up for that. You're going to ha- you're gonna run into some bad nights, especially on the road. But that's why when you're at home, you cannot – this year, C-Dub, cannot be losing Oklahoma State and Oklahoma. At home, yeah. Not home. Not, or in lost to K-State, too, I believe. They beat anyway. That's all. They did, there. yeah, because that was after the they played Texas in that crazy high emotion game. Yep. And then their next Turn home around. game was Kansas State, and everything after that Texas game was kind of like. Eh. I don't know if they no the, the Kansas State game. They beat Kansas State because that was like the best student section game of the year. Was yeah, it? I'm yes. looking at. I think that yeah. was two years ago. Correct. Two, am I two years ago they yeah, lost to K yeah. State? You're right. I'm Aiden. sorry, everybody. Yeah, it was Nigel Pack at a bunch of threes. It was the damn. Um, Oklahoma State game. So they had played Texas, Kansas State, and in Kansas in a row last year. And in that oh, the yeah, student section all. was as good as it's yep. ever been. It yep. was it was miserable waiting in line. 
<laughs> for like that stretch. And then they had that Saturday game against Oklahoma State, and it was just like. Where is everybody? Yeah, Wait a minute. Died. Who yeah. are we chanting the F-bomb at today? <laughs> What's going on? Avery Anderson? He's not even playing. And they, sco- oh, they, and they couldn't score. Yeah, that's bad. And, like, Grill was having his whole deal at the time, oh, like, where true. they didn't know, like, if he was hurt or not. And he's running out there. And he got mad and, like, yelled at TJ. And, like, it was a – that was a deal. Yeah, last year, man, what a weird year that was. Holy smoke. Steve Kemp, our buddy, says, I already missed the double round, Robin. Preach, brother. Yeah, I hear you. I, I do, too, but this is the – let's wait until next year. It'll probably be an 18-game schedule next year, right? or a 20-game 20. 20. schedule It's going to go year. to 20, pretty sure. Which you pretty much have to do yeah. when you're playing with that many yep. teams. I just hate it because it doesn't give you a true champion. Like, you just – nobody really knows. Now we're, we're no better than the Big Ten. Nope. Nope. All right, um – Get out there to Hilton tonight if you're listening to this on a Wednesday. Uh, big game for the women, 6.30 tip. Men and women both, we believe, tip at 5 on Saturday. That's that a fact. We will be back with Williams and Bloom on Sunday night. It's Fran Frischilla season. It is Fran Frischilla season, baby. Presented, as always, by Mechdyne. He is Brent Bloom. My name is Chris Williams. Aiden Wyatt producing. We'll be back on Sunday, everybody.